Hi, my name is Torben Bräutigam from VMware Global Support Services and I'll be going through SSL certificate handling in vSphere 6.0 today. On the agenda today, we have a quick overview of the vSphere 6.0 changes for certificates, an introduction to the VMware Certificate Authority, as well as the VMware Endpoint Certificate Store. Further, I'll take a quick look at the Certificate Manager and the common replacement tasks it performs for you. First, a look at the architectural changes in 6.0 compared to 5.1 and 5.5. In vCenter 5.1 and 5.5, every service had its own endpoint. This required us to have a unique certificate for each of them. In 6.0, this was changed to a single endpoint through which every service gets accessed, changing the requirements with just a single user-facing certificate. Starting in vCenter 5.1, we made it possible to install the four core services, single sign-on, web client, inventory service, and vCenter server, onto different machines. This created countless deployment models. With vSphere 6.0, we have removed this complexity and grouped all services into two components, the Platform Service Controller and the vCenter Server. Each vCenter requires one Platform Service Controller, though this Platform Service Controller can be shared amongst multiple vCenters. The two components can be set up in two different ways. One is the embedded model, where you install the Platform Service Controller and vCenter Server on the same machine, or externally, where you install the Platform Service Controller on one machine the vCenter on another. In the embedded model, you have one SSL certificate endpoint. For the external model, you will have as many as you have platform service controllers and vCenters interlinked. The default certificates in vSphere 5.x were self-signed OpenSSL certificates that we signed using the own private key of it. They were usually considered insecure, untrusted by enterprise and internet clients and were rather difficult to revoke or cancel. Further, we had no documented replacement procedure for self-signed certificates on Windows. On the other side, we didn't have a SSL automation tool for the vCenter server appliance. With vCenter 6.0, we started shipping an internal certificate authority, the VMware Certificate Authority or VMCA. The default certificates in vSphere 6 are now CA signed, easily regenerated, and no longer need an external OpenSSL binary for creation. They further have consistent names and expiration dates and in a future release can be revoked. Trusts between the different vCenter server components were in the past handled by comparing the SSL thumbprint to the one that they receive on the connection. This required a re-registration every time you change the certificates for the services. Starting with v 6.0, we have moved away from the SSL thumbprint verification by default. We have moved this over to the VMware Endpoint Certificate Store, which handles the certificate storage and the trust relationships. This means we are no longer required to re-register the components when we replace the certificates. It also makes it easy to ensure each solution has a valid certificate, and further, this enabled us to create a proper interface to view, replace, and manage certificates. With vCenter 6.0, we have introduced several new vCenter solutions which will help us manage certificates. The VMware Certificate Authority, VMCA, the VMware Authentication Framework, VMAFD, and the VMware Endpoint Certificate Store. These components also hook into single sign-on via the VMware Directory Service, VMDIR. We'll be taking a closer look at the VMware Certificate Authority at this point. The purpose of the VMCA is to issue certificates, validate them, and in the future revoke them. It depends on the VMware Directory Service and the VMware Kerberos of Service. The VMCA can operate in two different modes, one being the root mode or the other, the intermediate certificate authority mode. In the root CA mode, it has its own self-signed root certificate authority certificate. This certificate was created during the installation. Initially, all solution and endpoint certificates are created from this. This means that importing the VMCA root certificate into the client's key store will make all issue certificates trust. Further, we can always revert to this mode with the certificate management tool or manually, as shown later. The difference between the root CA and the intermediate CA mode is that the root CA certificate that was created during installation is replaced by a trusted intermediate CA certificate. This requires an enterprise or commercial certificate authority to generate a new issuing certificate. 
Afterwards, you will have to replace all issued default certificates. The private keys must be 1024 bit or higher. The default is 2048 bit. There is no option to provide a password for this. Certificate signing requests use the PKCS 10 standard, even internally. The intermediate CA itself is not allowed to have a wildcard in the subject alternate name. You can use a wildcard for the domain name if the VMCA is operating in this domain. The VMCA validates the credentials and the certificate signing request prior to the issuance of certificates. The lifetime of these certificates will always be less than the root CA lifetime. We do not support renewal, rekeying or modification of certificates. The only way to alter the certificate is to revoke it and then issue a new certificate with the changes needed. Revocation will be offered in a future release via CRLs. There will be no option for temporary suspension of certificates. The VMCA is not a fully featured certificate authority. It's designed for use only with vSphere products. You can avoid using the VMCA and you might have to depending on the policies in your company. VMCA relies on the operating system security for its assets. Anyone with root access to a VMCA machine can read the CA's root key. As such, you should monitor all access to the machine. The tool used to manage the VMCA is the CERT tool. It can be used for all operations of the VMCA, including the initialization and the management of it. You can configure the CERT tool in two ways, either via a configuration file, the certtool.config, which is similar to an OpenSSL's configuration file and provides common certificate information. You can also use the command line for it. The parameters are the exact same as in the configuration file. Do take care when using the command line to get the case of the parameters right. Otherwise, you might notice strange errors. Next up is the VMware Endpoint Certificate Store. It is mandatory for vSphere to function. It also runs as part of the authentication framework VMAFD. It is purpose-made as an internal repository for certificates and private keys and is installed on embedded nodes, PSCs and management nodes. VEX operates on the principle of key stores. It can have unlimited key stores. Each store is given a name. Each store can contain any number of entries. These entries all contain a combination of the certificate and private key related to it. Each entry is given an alias. For vSphere to function, we have a couple of default stores. The machine SSL certificate store for the machine endpoint, the trusted roots, trusted root CRLs, and the solution users for the machine VPXD, its extensions, and the web client. Management of the endpoint certificate store is done via the VEX CLI command. You can use it to create, delete, and list stores as well as entries. You can modify store permissions, get certificates and keys from a store, or force a refresh from the VMware directory. In vSphere 6.0, we have replaced the SSL automation tool with the vSphere 6.0 Certificate Manager. This tool provides feature parity for the appliance and for the Windows installation of vCenter. It is built into the default installation and provides facilities for management of all common certificate tasks required for vCenter. It's a command line tool and this is what it looks like. Option 4 can be used to regenerate the certificate of the VMCA and then replace all certificates issued by it. If you can't use the VMCA due to policy, you will want to use option 1 and option 5 to replace all machine and solution user certificates with your own. If you plan on using the VMCA as an intermediate certificate authority, you can use option 2 to implement this. Option number 3 and 6 are then required to replace the remaining certificates. In the presentation you will find 9 further slides with common replacement task examples. These slides will provide you with preparations, actions taken and common use cases for certain operations. You can use these as a small reference. Thank you very much for your time. For further reference, the last slide contains a couple of links to KBR tickets regarding certificate replacement. Have a good day.